Big Show with Night and Day. Pick up a Night and Day milk bar card and get your sixth shake for free. Don't fight it. It's time to go up a size. This is the biggest, the biggest, the biggest. This is the biggest. Our biggest show. The Hodaki Big Show with Jason Hoyt, Mike Minogue and Keezy. Oh, g'day, you mad bastards. It's great to have your company this Wednesday afternoon. It is the 13th of March, 2024, and you, my friends, are listening to The Big Show, brought to you by night and... Uh, uh, and Mogi, you stallion, you Adonis, you statue of a man, how's life? Going pretty grassy, you mad dog, you sick son of a bee. Pretty excited to be into a hump day, man. Yeah. A hump, a hump, a hump. I used, to have, I used to get all worked up about hump days, but now I look forward to them. You love I, it, eh? Because now I go, I'm going to get through this hump day, you and I feel great. I'm, I'm on the downward slide for the rest of the week. You know what I'm saying? I hear you. Yeah, man, good stuff. Hey, incidentally, you came in today with a beautiful toasted sandwich. What was in that, by the way? Uh, there wasn't as much in the toasted sandwich as it was. It ended up being all over my shirt by the time I'd finished eating it. Sure. Um, it was uh, eggplant. Oh, so good, man. Smell delicious. Keezy, you mad bastard. How's life? Life's pretty good, fellas. Uh, yeah, it's just great. Things are going good for old Keezy. Everything's coming up, Keezy. Everything's looking up, fellas. Oh, that's good to hear, Keezy. Um, I, uh, I got a call from your wife last night, but listen, I won't get into that. Um, but no, I am glad, my friend, as <laughs> always. I'm, I'm happy for you that you think things are Jace. going great. Yes. How are you going? Yeah, good, thanks, mate. That's good. Uh, Have I you washed your you? hat? Pardon? Have you washed your cap? No. Didn't think so. Uh, <laughs> that is really dirty, isn't it? <laughs> it's filthy. It's but like sweaty. It's, it's disgusting. It's been a bit of a frantic day for me, and I'll get into that. Uh, I, had, I, bet, I had a bit of a meltdown at one point, Mogi. I'm uh, not sure. A classic sort of hoity Jane <laughs> moment where I, was, I just wanted to punch myself in the face. But listen... <laughs> Big show. Uh, we got a big show. We got a lot going on. But what I want to know is where are you listening to the show and what are you wearing today, New Zealand? Text us on 3483 or send us a talk back on the iHeartRadio app or you can go old school and call us on 0800 Hodaki. That's right, everyone that does that instantly in the draw for a $50 night and day voucher. And yes, plenty of texts coming through on 3483. We will be putting more people in the draw to potentially join us in Brizzy for Magic Round. Oh, so good. In the meantime, let's kick off with a bit of radio head. The Hodaki Big Show Podcast. Oh, yes, indeed. Oasis there on the radio. Hodaki Big Show this uh, Wednesday afternoon, 27 minutes past four o'clock. Now we've got a... A radio legend on the phone with us right now, and it's in regards to a podcast that he and his colleague did today, another radio legend. Uh, it's the one and only Matt Heath. Matt, how are you going? I'm so good. Thanks for talking to me today, guys. How are you? Are you good? good yeah, thing? yeah, good, thanks. Good I mean, thanks. Keezy's in a hoor of a mood. Mogi's a bit tetchy, but I'm good, Matt. Thanks for asking. Yeah. Oh, you're always good, Jason. Thanks, and mate. how about Minogi? Minogi, are you good? I'm going good, man. I'm just hanging out with um, with these uh, backbones here. Of course, Keezy's in a hurr of a mood. Jace is wearing his filthy cap, but I've got Pugsan here to look after me, so all good. Oh, that's all right. He'll help you through, yeah. So, yeah, we've got this podcast out today, guys, and it's about a legendary moment in New Zealand television history. It's actually uh, registered as one of the top 60 moments of all time, and wow. it was the Havoc and Newsboys sellout tour when they went to Gore and they described Gore as the gay capital of New Zealand. They said uh, the G is for gay, and this was in 1998, so 26 years ago to the day. And that wouldn't seem like the most controversial thing to say now, but at the time it caused quite a hurrah, if that is actually a word, I'm not sure if it is. But, yes. And uh, they were threatened by the mayor of the town, Mary Og at the time, in 1998, that if she, they ever came back to town, Mikey Havoc and Jeremy Wells, they'd be chased out by her, and a bunch of other people with sticks wrapped in barbed wire. That's how how badly yeah, it was a they different, took the suggestion different that time. gay people. Yeah. Different Because I, I remember, Matt, um, on one of your guys' podcast intros ages ago, uh, Jerry telling the story of actually going back to Gore and being at a gas station, and then some people actually found out he was there and started organising people to come and chase him out of town like they promised to do. So it wasn't actually them joking around. No, no, though, he was just surrounded. And they, they, we've got part one of this uh, podcast series on um, Gay Gore and um, we get to that later de- later down the track but yeah he was surrounded with devastation, people banging on the car, threatening him Wanting to make love to him probably Yeah, probably you know, wanting to have sex with him <laughs> You know what they're like in Gore <laughs> Yeah, well exactly, there was a sexual tension there ironically um, <laughs> and uh, Jerry ended up like managing to escape at high speed and then had to hide in a, in a motel Playing hard uh-huh. to get 
and <laughs> well, people were banging on the doors, and the police wouldn't help, and it's, it was quite a furore just around saying something that's reasonably pedestrian. You imagine these days, yesterday. yeah. Well, that nowadays, if you if you haven't done anything gay, there's that you probably get beaten up. What? <laughs> I, I'm seeing that's how much it's flipped. We've gone yeah. completely the other way. Yeah, yeah. yeah the, the I'm coins. loving it. And, I'm loving the it. side of the coin. And Maddie, I know one you of the most. Hamilton, if you went to Hamilton now and see that it's the heterosexual capital of New Zealand, you'd be right out. You'd of be town. smacked down. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Uh, one of the most successful podcasts we've ever done here at Hodaki, Maddie Heath, was when you got Mikey Havoc in to talk about the Larnet Castle incident. I understand he's coming again to discuss this particular issue. Yeah, that's right, actually. And, I, and strangely, you know, the pounding at Lanark's Castle, which was a really popular podcast, it was just <laughs> an evening that uh, Mikey Havoc spent with Miss County's Manico <laughs> after a uh, Miss New Zealand competition, and it kept everyone awake at the Lanark's Castle stables. But this incident, the Gay Gore incident, was less than 12 hours after that, because wow. it was the very next day. So it's a really historic 24 hours for um, well, yeah, I mean, television. I've, I've recently, um, I've recently rewatched this with um, a, a young relative of mine who, who wasn't aware of it because he's only about 22, 23. And if I remember correctly, that actually they just pulled over the side of the road to shoot that, um, not knowing that it was going to turn into one of the biggest uh, pieces of New Zealand broadcasting history. Yeah, well, in fact, they only were talking. They were so hungover. They just wanted to say some stupid stuff to get back on the road, kind of to annoy the director, actually. Yeah. All they wanted to do, they were going to Slope Hill, you know, the, the most southern point in New Zealand. Going everyone. to what? Slope Hill, the most... So, yeah. Um, <laughs> they had to change the name of that, actually. But, <laughs> you can't <laughs> say that anymore, mate. Yeah, 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 they had to change the name of that. But, you know, the classic thing for a New Zealand television show in the day to travel down to the southernmost point of the country. They just wanted to get there and go back to sleep. Dangerously dusty, and they blasted out this link, and it was actually really high quality. I mean, Jerry's got a squeaky, posh, Remy Lera voice back in that day. He does. Sounds yeah, like, he did. Yeah. Sounds, sounds like he's on helium, but um, a fantastic ad-libs, very amusing break, but they never thought it was going to be in the show, and then, and then it was. And, and then here we are. Oh, wow. Blow up. Well, absolutely. Do yourselves a favour and have a listen to this podcast. Um, it, it, I, and before you listen to that, re-watch the clip. You can watch the clip. Just give it a Google there. I watched yeah. it recently, and it is an absolutely hilarious piece of television and really shows what a great duo, um, you know, Jerry and uh, and Havo yeah. were. It was in the top two duo, du- duos that Jerry's been in in his career. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, yeah. 100%. Yeah, oh, I love sure. him and Hills Bears. Yeah, you're right, Matt. Yeah, oh, top top Hills Bears is great. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, uh, Matt, hey, thanks for your time, mate. Make sure if you, you go and check that um, podcast out, wherever you get your podcasts. Yeah, yeah. And hey, um, bless you guys. Hey, Thanks, love man. You. Hey. Thanks, man. See Thanks, you, buddy. The Hodaki Big Show Podcast. Oh, yeah, but a rage to wake you up this Wednesday afternoon. But right now it's time for a bit of tool action. What do we say, fellas? Ah, oh, sharpest tool in the shed. That's right. Thanks to our mates at Placemakers in the Monster Tool Sale, which is on right now. Head in store or go online. Get yourself a bargain. Uh, you can win yourself a sweet Hakoki power tool. Yeah, so good, Keezy. Uh, Simon, you mad bastard. How's life? Yeah, good, thanks, fellas. Yeah, good stuff, mate. Now, listen, I'll explain the rules to you just so you know. We're going to name 10 tools. You need to name five of them um, as a minimum in 10 seconds. All good? Uh, yeah, I'll try my best. Yeah, cool. You, and just quickly, Simon, before we start, what do you do for a crust? Uh, I'm a glazer. Oh, 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 backbone. 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 <laughs> good stuff, mate. Good stuff. So you love your tools then, Simon, obviously. Yeah, yeah, it's not, not the tools, it's the man, of course. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah of yeah, course. Yeah, yeah. yeah, of course. <laughs> All right, Simon, let's kick off and let's get stuck into it. Are you ready, mate? Yeah, so what, what am I doing again? Uh, you've got to name five <laughs> of the ten tools we name in under ten oh, seconds. So you listen to ten, mate, Brilliant. and then we'll give you some time and you're going to name five, all right? Good as gold. I'm a glazer, remember, guys. Good so on you, mate. Yeah, no, all good, Simon, all good. Okay, you ready to go, mate? Ready to go. Sandpaper. Left-handed screwdriver. Five-finger shuffler. Vice. Tartan paint. Cordless dilly. Screwdriver. Elbow grease. Compressed ass blaster. Drill. All right, Simon, take it away, mate. Five tools. Cool. I had a screwdriver, left-handed screwdriver, sandpaper, uh, cordless drilly, and one more was the ass blaster. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you what. Yeah. We'll give it to you, Simon. Well done, my friend. <laughs> Yeah, well Boy. done, Simon. Oh, killed a voice too much. I've got to be, I've got to be honest with you. Some of those tools I haven't heard of. What? No. what? You know what I mean? <laughs> I, I haven't heard of those. One. Yeah. I thought of, that was one for our apprentices, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Yeah, good. That's right. Hey, Keezy, oh, what Simon won? 
Simon, you, my friend, have won yourself a brand new Hikoki cordless impact drill driver. Oh, you guys are, are backbones yourselves. Thank oh, you so much. Yeah. Good on you, mate. Good on you, mate. Good Good on you, mate. Stay on okay. the line and I'll, I'll, I'll mate Pugsan in Studio B will... Look after Look you. after Yeah, yeah, sweet. Perfect. Good yeah. stuff. Uh, another chance to win some more tools over the coming days as well. So if you did miss out, don't you worry. The big are show's do- got you covered. Are we doing that tomorrow, are we? Yeah. Oh, and Friday? Yeah. <laughs> did you not know that? No. Oh. Seems oh. really stupid. Tune. The Hodaki Big Show. Weekdays at four on Radio Hodaki. The song that reduced old Mogi to tears when he saw it live, eh, Mogi? Yeah. Got me Beautiful. good, that one. She's got a hell of a hell of a voice on her, She's got she? real pipes on her, Yeah, right? man. Real lungs. Her pipes go all the way up. Yeah. Am I right? Yeah. Sure, man. Hey, guys, um, What's kids up? say the darndest things, am I right? Yeah. Do you, yeah, want, do you want to do that segment? Have you got that? Yeah, absolutely. What Holy did help. you say? Where did you learn that? Keezy. Oh, you watch your f- mouth. Sorry about that. She gets it from her mother. Kids say the damnedest things. That is so true, man. That is so true. Um, uh, my daughter was uh, hanging out with her cousin the other day. Cousin's even younger. Uh, he's only two. Right. Tell her I actually turned three today. Oh, happy birthday. Do we... Happy birthday. I mean, he's yeah, not boy. listening, though, is yeah. um, And they were sort of playing with Tinker, and we had to... Your dog. Who, Tinker? My dog. I don't know if you guys know about my dog called Tinker. So they're playing with a dog called Tinker, and she's an old girl now. She's not the uh, the, the the ferocious being she used to be, the agile beast. Sure. Um, she's deaf. She's blind. She's got arthritis. She struggles to get around. You know, it's a bit sad. But being kids, they don't know that, so they play quite rough. Right, yeah. Um, and so I just said, especially, you know, the little cousin there, he's a boy, so he's a bit more hardcore yeah, there kid, than the girl. Little, little fellas. And I don't want to say, you know, that that's because of the gender or anything like that, but it's just the way that it's worked out. I don't right. know what it is, Keezy. Who yeah. knows? I mean, who cares, yeah. Um, but I said, you know, I said to them, look, you're just going to have to calm it down here because, you know, Tinker's... She's old, she's deaf, she's run down. you just got to go a bit easier on yeah. her. It's like us with Jace. That's right. Sure, like that. sure. Uh, my daughter yeah. said, well, you know what the good thing is? Um, and she's, what is she now? She's four. She said, the good thing is that we can say the meanest things we want to Tinker because she can't hear us. Yeah. And I was like, that's exactly right, man. You can say whatever you want. So don't be so, like, physical with her. Yeah, but... Uh, just, you can really just call her whatever you want, you know, and sorry, look, sort of sun, a yeah. bug-eyed freak show, your deaf well, old cow, think... and so on and so forth. But, and that's the thing, it doesn't hurt Tinker's feelings because she can't hear it. Yeah, but that's encouraging sure. bullying, isn't it? But they were going... In the end, I saw, t- I saw Tinker's face, and I think she did actually get the gist of it, man. Because, yeah, like the I mean, kids are going pretty hard. Like, they're flipping the bird. Yeah. Like spit all coming out. Like, absolute rage. These kids were just screaming at the dog. So Tigger's ears, the quite long ears, are blowing back. So ferocious was the tirade I mean, coming sure. her way. Even Our if- little cousin there did a brown eye. Oh, right. the old classic brown eye. But and, even if Tinker... And that was when Tinker was like, what? Even if Tinker wasn't there. she deaf, was like, what? If Tinker wasn't deaf, I mean, she can't really understand English anyway. You know what I mean? Because she's a dog. What? Dogs Never mind. Pick up, dogs pick up on vibes, Keezy. They do. So, so you reckon Tinker picked up on the vibe of the brown eye? Well, yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's hard not to, to get the the vibe of a brown <laughs> yeah, eye. It's yeah, right. staring you in the face. But actually, Tinker thought that was um, an olive branch being extended. Yes, being I was a dog, say. Because it's a dog, she oh. was like, it was. She thought he was saying hello. Oh, right. She thought, yeah, saying, Kia ora, come on over. Oh, oh that's great, Mogi. That's great. It's very like cool, man. You're running a really good setup over there. That's good. Hey, now listen. Um, <laughs> heat's coming up after 5 o'clock, including your chance to get in the draw for uh, the Magic Round over in Brizzy with the big show. Oh, yeah. Uh, we've got a new segment, Hoody J Investigate. Uh, where I've been going deep undercover. Oh, yeah. Uh, that as well. What else have we got? Um, no, Did you oh, mention Brizzy? Yeah, I mentioned oh, Brizzy, Keezy. What about What's for Tea, New Zealand with me, Keezy? That's after six, oh, Keezy. Okay. Oh, we'll forget it then. Don't Pay worry attention, about it. please. The Hodaki Big Show podcast. Catch them weekdays from four on Radio Hodaki. Welcome back, you massive backbones. You're listening to The Big Show, brought to you by night and uh, day. Hope you're getting through your hump day all right now. 
a big hour ahead, isn't there, fellas? Is there? Certainly is. Yeah, oh, by what? God, we've got a lot going on, including your chance to uh, get on the trip with the big show to the Magic Round in Brizzy. Yeah, no big deal, man. Uh, yeah, no, no big, big deal. deal at all. Yeah, it's not even massive. It's Don't like worry what, about it. eight, eight, all eight games of NRL, yeah. all in Suncorp Stadium. We're going as well. You get to hang with us. That's cool. Yeah. Um, incidentally, have any of you fellas been to Brizzy? Yeah. You must have, Moni. Yep. Oh, you both have. Yep. Nice. I've been to a state of O there. Great. Oh, yeah. I've eaten lunch on halfway at Suncorp. On the field. Wow, okay. Do you remember the Brisbane uh, Tens? Yes. They were kicking that off like a nines alternative, uh, but Super Rugby, yeah, we did that. And then the competition was cancelled pretty much straight away. Cool, man. Yeah, that's great, Sweet. easy. That's great. No, but it's got a massive opportunity for someone out there and your mate, whether that's your wife or your best mate or your dad, as someone suggested. Yes. Uh, so we'll be doing that between five and six, and also Hoity J Investigates. But let's get into the tune, Look, shall just, we? Just quickly on yeah. Hoity J Investigates, which is coming up next, what actually is that? Um, what a lot of people don't know about me, fellas, is I used to be an investigative journalist. Mm. Mm, uh, right. That was what I did before I sort of got into the whole filming radio sort of genres. Sure. Uh, I was a journalist. It was always my passion. Uh, and very much undercover because I think uh, the truth matters. Uh, and I think people have the right to know what's going on in their world. And, right, okay. and so, you know, I've, I've found myself in some pretty precarious scenarios um, over the years. Right. So I thought I'd bring that back for the show. And you're going to break, like, blow the lid on something yeah. bigger. I remember you I did, uh, yeah, you went undercover for a long time in a series of brothels. Yes. Tell okay. us about that. Oh, I, <laughs> I'll tell you what, i tell you what, I will. I will do that. But maybe a little bit further down the line. Cool, man. Yeah, yeah sounds yeah. great. All right. Uh, in the meantime, here's the Mint Chats. The Hodaki Big Show Podcast. Oh, yes, indeed. David Bowie there on the radio. Hodaki Big Show this Wednesday afternoon, 12 minutes uh, past five o'clock. Now it's time for a brand new segment. Hoity J investigates. Incidentally, fellas, I should uh, uh, let you know too. I'm thinking of uh, making this a television thing as well. Yeah, oh, cool. at, at the moment, it's just audio. Yeah. Uh, as previously stated, I used to be an undercover investigative journalist. Uh, it's always mattered to me the truth, uh, and it's always mattered to me making sure that people know what's going on, and particularly when people have been taken advantage of or used. Um, and I'm not sure if you're aware at the moment. It's quite a phenomenon throughout not just New Zealand but the world. Uh, phone scamming. Oh, uh, the yeah. elderly have been desperately affected by mm, it, of course. They're te- the easiest to get. Well, they are the easiest to get. Technology's sort of taken over. Uh, and I've known of a couple of people close to me that have been personally affected by that. So I've said to myself, enough is enough. I'm going to find out what the hell's going on with all this stuff. Okay. Right, okay. So I went under uh, uh, went in, um, undercover investigation. Uh, and one of the things you'll realise, of course, when you're going undercover and investigating something like this, and you'll, re- you'll realise this, Mogi, you have to play the game. you got to play the game. Uh, you know, when we were undercover for the cops with the drug scene, yep. uh, occasionally you'd have to have a little bong. Yeah. You know, right. occasionally you'd have to take some mushies. Yeah. Uh, occasionally you'd have to smoke some ice. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because if they found out that you weren't for real, yeah. you know, you're, in a, it, you're in a world of pain. Yeah. So I went undercover. Basically, the scenario and the setup for people is that they, they ring from all over the world and they ask you to get on your computer, they ask you to enter your password, they say we're this service or we're that service and we've noticed some glitches mm. uh, with your accounts and so forth. So I, I got one of those calls, I set one of those calls up, they gave me a call, I got on my computer and I played the game basically. Oh, yeah. I did everything they asked me, I put in my, my details, I put in my password within five minutes without a word of a uh, I, fellas, all of my accounts emptied. Douche, 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 douche. And I thought to myself, I've got the bastards. I have right. absolutely nailed the bastards. Right. Uh, because that's how they get in. I thought you playing the game would have been you scamming someone. No, but no, but this is the thing, Keezy. You right. have to make it look as though you're just an innocent sort of bystander. You know, I pretended to be old, for example. A toddler, yeah. Yes. Yeah, sorry? Sorry, yes, yes. Uh, so acting came into it. Um, and they're just incredibly insidious, right. the, these people, when it comes to sort of phone hacking and stuff like that. All of my accounts cleared. Uh, but the good side of it was I figured out how they do it. So, yeah, well, yeah, they tell you to enter your details and then they just access it, right? Exactly, Keezy. So how are you going to stop that? Well, this is the thing I want to get out there. And when I publish my... Um, 
my article, this is the thing I'll be telling people, which is don't give them access to your computer. Yeah. Don't give them access to yeah. your password. Don't give them access to anything. And if you're unsure and you don't really know, ask for verification. Ask for speaking to the manager. Okay. Uh, so, who, so who dis? Who dis? Y- yes. Exactly. Who dis? Um, and, th- and this is the other extraordinary thing about it, actually, is that they're, uh, they're not New Zealand based. They're often overseas. Wow. Yeah. And this is the extraordinary thing about technology, which is that they don't need to be here to pull this sort of stuff off. It's not even and New th- Zealand thieves you're supporting. And they deliberately target the elderly. And the stupid. A- and the stupid and the vulnerable. Okay. So that's good. I'm glad you're sort of, you know, showing a spotlight on this. It's a massive issue. Um, so what's going to happen with all your, your money that you lost and stuff? Oh, well, this is the downside of it. And this is the game yeah. here. To play, and this is the risk of it. Uh, because I did it willingly, the bank said they're not going to put the money back in. Right. How much uh, did they because, take? Oh, it was about $85,000. Wow. Um, but, yeah, as I say, because I went into it knowingly, they, they said we can't, we, we can't right. do it if you knew what you were doing. But yeah. it did expose the bastards. Nice. Oh, yeah, no, I mean, great okay. job. I feel like it didn't really expose. Yeah, okay. I am looking forward to your brothel um, expose, eh? that's for sure. Yeah, because you put a lot of work in there, AJ. Let's talk yeah. about that. Yeah. Man, yeah, that, that, I mean, you uncovered some pretty hairy situations. Oh, look, I, I'm um, still uncovering the scars from it. Yeah, uh, I'm, so, I'm still carrying the scars, can I put it that way? Pressing Maybe. a lot of flesh over there. The Hodaki Big Show, weekdays at four on Radio Hodaki. Tom Petty there on the Radio Hodaki Big Show this Wednesday after two, uh, afternoon, 22 minutes past five o'clock. Uh, Jace, you just blew the lid on phone scammers. Uh, we all appreciate that in a new segment called Hoity J Investigates. I thought just to prepare the audience and so they could take some learnings from this, we should go through a scenario of how you should actually deal with a scammer when they do call you up. Sure. Yeah. So do you guys think you're, well, you know, qualified enough, especially after spending all that time um, undercover? Well, absolutely, Geezy. All right, so I'll play the phone scammer. Yes. Um, I'm going to be trying to get your details, all right? So this is how we should handle okay. this situation. Well, Mogi's details? Actually, yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, Mogi, yeah. you okay. play... Yeah, okay. And then, Jace, you're the expert, so you can sort of commentate how we're going, you know? Sure. Okay. All right, so the phone's ringing. Hang on. G'day, it's old Mogi here. Oh, hi, it's uh, it's Keezy here from your bank. Um, Actually, Keezy, I'll just stop you there. The guy I was speaking to with the phone scamming, he was an Indian chap. Right. Well, I just think for this particular scenario, I don't think it's a good idea for me to start doing accents and things like that because it's actually a serious... Oh, okay, just keep it simple. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah okay, realistic. Yeah. Okay, no, yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, no, that's fine. Okay. All right, so, fine, here we go. Who is it? Hi, this is, uh, it's Keezy here from your bank. Oh. Actually, sorry, Keezy, I'll just stop you there just again because he didn't give a name. He just said it's uh, it's blah, blah, blah calling from... Oh. Yeah, he didn't give an actual name. He just said what the company was. Oh, okay, all right. Yeah, yeah. So hang on, here we go again. Or just make up a name. Right. Okay, so a made-up name will be yeah, better. Yeah, because if I you know say, oh, it's Keezy. Keezy, he'll be like, yeah, yeah Keezy, Keezy. Oh, Keezy. Good, man. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I didn't know you had a day job at a bank, man. Congrats. He's throwing me off. Okay. All right, here we go. Hello. Hi, it's uh, Bob Shepard here from your bank. How are oh, you? Oh, hey, Bob, man. How's it going? Yeah, uh, good, thank you. How are you today? Uh, yeah, all good, man. Hey, that's great to hear. Um, just letting you know that because uh, I am calling from your bank, there's a bit of a, an issue with your account. Yeah, I'm not surprised. Yeah. No, nah, like a, like a, there's a, been a weird uh, mistake and some money's actually been taken out of your account. I'd love yeah, to help you. Yeah, that was me. Oh, was it? Yeah. Oh, no, nah, so there's, I can see that, that money you took out, uh, but there's actually been some ex, some more money taken out at another time as well, and it looks like it was a mistake. Ah. So I'd love to help you fix that. Um, are you near your computer? Can I, sorry, Keezy, I'll just stop you there because it's perfectly conceivable, given that it was Mogi, that A, that initial money was for Queen of the Nile, and then the second part, which looks slightly dodgy, is probably steamed getting more money to play Queen of the Nile. Yeah, amongst right. other things. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. I know. So, I mean, me. I'm buying all sorts of things. No, no. So he's not thinking, oh, that someone, <laughs> he is probably very well aware of the fact no, that he did spend that money. Oh, absolutely, and in this scenario, because remember, this is just a scenario. Oh, that's oh, right. right. We're just yeah, trying yeah, to yeah. Thing. yeah, yeah, this it's is like acting. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, go. so. 
G'day, Bob Shepard from my bank. How's it going, well, man? Like Sorry, we got disconnected there, brother. You're telling me about some issues with um, yeah. some of the transactions on my bloody bank account there. Yes, cause. sorry. What, so, what happened there, brother? Uh, well, what, uh, it's, it's a weird glitch, and it looks like two grand's been taken out um, of your account. I haven't got two grand. Oh, did I say two grand? I meant two, uh, like one and a half grand. Oh. Sorry, Keezy. Look, what? I'm just going to have to stop you there because actually in, in terms of going back, and, and you're doing a great job. Oh, you're nailing but the it. Guy it just that, doesn't feel like The it. guy that scammed me, he didn't say he was from the bank. He oh. said he was from, you know, he Why was you like tell me cyber security right. in oh. terms of my account, well, I was, not my I bank was account. It. I was in it. Okay. I, was, I thought you were doing a great job, man. Yeah. Uh, okay. Oh, okay. No, that's good. Well, hang on. Let's just, okay, here. Jesus Christ, Bob, what do you want, man? You've been calling me all day. I've got shit to do. Sorry, sorry, uh, Mike, was it? Uh, sorry, it's Bob Shepard here from Banks from the bank, Cyber Security. Cyber Security, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, so you, a thousand bucks has been taken out of your account. Right. And if you could just go to your laptop right now. Have you got a laptop? Yeah. Go Casey, to that. Casey, I don't really want to interrupt, but it's not about the bank accounts at this point. It's about getting access to his password. Right. Oh, uh, yeah. So can you just get your laptop out and just type your password in there and then just read it out loud as you're doing it? Okay, no. I'll stop you there, Casey. <laughs> Mogi, don't do that. <laughs> Thanks, man. Far out. What will we do without Hoity J? The Hodaki Big Show. Weekdays at four on Radio Hodaki. We're back on tours here on the Radio Hodaki Big Show this Wednesday afternoon. But right now, it's time for... Here they come. Try time! Oh. Holy cow, the Warriors. <laughs> oh, yeah! Up the Warriors, baby! It's the Big Show in Brizzy for the NRL Magic Round. How good, eh, fellas? Bloody oath. That's exciting. You like that? Great yeah, that, commentary there. There's like a bloody that? great sting. Whoever that is made good. that. Was that a pug sign piece of work, was it? It wasn't, actually. Oh. I made it. Uh, of course, thanks to our mates at boystrip.co.nz, oh, right. the ultimate prize. Joining the four of us in Brizzy for Magic Round, eight games of rugby league, all at Suncorp, everything paid for. Great stuff. Clayton, you mad bastard. How's life? How are we, lad? Yeah, good, thanks, mate. Good. You love your rugby league there, Clayton? Oh, mate. Die hard Newcastle Knights supporter here. Oh, oh that's interesting. Nice. interesting. Okay, well, I like the fact that you're owning your team and not trying to sort of gaslight us by saying you're just a Waz fan. No, no, no. I, you know, I don't discriminate, but still hope the boys have a good one. Yeah, yeah on you're you, mate. Caleb who, who would you uh, take with you, Clayton? What was that, mate? Who would you take with you? Oh, I'd try for one of the boys, but I'd probably end up taking the wife, I reckon. My yeah. wife. Good on you, mate. Good on you. Stay on the line and our uh, mate Pakistan and Studio B will look after you. Louis, you mad bastard. How's life? Oh, not too bad, fellas. Good on you, mate. Uh, what team do you support in the old Rugby League? Oh, I'm going to gaslight you and up the worst. Oh, yeah, on you, boy. Good yeah, on you, mate. Yeah, 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 yeah. Nice. What do you do for a crest, Louis? A uh, researcher. Oh, oh fair. Wait, yeah, were you yeah, yesterday? Wait. You ring yesterday? I was, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, well, see. well. I yeah, like the fact yeah, that you're yeah. giving it a second nudge because nice it shows that you're that desperate to get into the draw. Oh, I mean, into the, to win the prize. Well, I'll tell you what, Louis, I'll chuck you over to Pugsan and I'll let him decide whether or not you can enter again. I can't remember if it was this segment or something else. It might have been the tools. I was the tools. It was the tools. Oh, it was oh, the tools. Oh, well, yeah, in that yeah, case, yeah. Louis, you're definitely on, on board, mate. Stay on the line and uh, Pugsan and Studio B will look after you. Reed from Napier, how's life? Hey, how's it going, mate? Good, good. Good on you, Reed. Uh, you love your rugby league too, mate? I oh, love it, love it. Huge rugby league fan. Oh, here, if you mate. had an opportunity, mate, who would you take? Oh, definitely definitely one of the lads, mate. The, the missus can stay at home for this one, I reckon. Yeah, good yeah, on you, okay. mate. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, hey, hey, to be honest oh. with you, like, we've never taken a trip before. The missus was, my wife was quite keen to come and then found out it was eight games of Buckbo League and she said, you know what, you can go alone on this bastard. Really? That seems oh, crazy. Yeah. Yeah, Mo- Mogi, snap. 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 Hey, uh, Reed, just quickly, mate, what do you do for a crust? Uh, civil engineer, mate. Oh, oh, backbone. Good on you, man. Stay on the line and uh, Pug Sam will sort you out. Oh, there you go, fellas. Hey, what do you think about that? Very good. I'm stoked. Uh, Big shout-out to boystrip.co.nz for making this all possible. Uh, Of course, this is a magnificent weekend of rugby league, and if you want to guarantee your spot, head to their website, boystrip.co.nz, and actually just book it, and we'll see you there. Yeah, because, you know, we're going to be there. We'd love to meet all the backbones while we're over there, fellas. If you don't win the prize, then at least you can come over and still hang out with us. You're going to be going to duty-free, man, on the way through? 
Yeah, I was actually asking a few people about duty free. I just don't know that it's any cheaper, Mogi. Yeah, but what you know, the old. Wow. You know what you should do? Hoity J investigates duty free. Oh. Keezy. What? It's a really good idea, man. Oh, thanks, man. The Hodaki Big Show Podcast. The red hot chili peppers there on the radio. Hodaki Big Show this Wednesday afternoon. The time is 5.47. Oh. Is it what? Jeez. Hey, I was coming back from the old uh, airport the other day after I'd been over in um, Los Angeles presenting the Academy Awards and I stripped John Cena. Got him good. <laughs> yeah, man. Um, and I was coming back and I had one of the more strange taxi rides that I've ever had in my life. And I've sure. had a few odd ones. Um, but I got back and there was meant to be a taxi book, but there was no taxi books. And you can imagine... Jace, I was... Jeffing and Jeffing. I was absolutely fine about it. No big oh, deal. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I just went and jumped in, an, in another taxi there. And then as I was... as we were, Well, he was driving, to be fair. I was a passenger. Oh, we weren't random. driving at all. So I was sitting in the back seat there because I like to feel like a big shot. Sure. You know what I mean? Big time. Big star in the back seat of the car. Yeah, I mean, I do that too. <laughs> and, I, I always sit in the front just because I'm a good bastard, I suppose. Oh, yeah. But anyway, carry You're on. normally driving the taxi, aren't you? Often I am. And um, old mate's driving away there, and I'm on the phone to somebody. I'm on the phone, and I'm sort of distracted by the phone call, but I notice that this guy is he's, he's lane changing. He's hopping the lanes. He's in and out. He's trying to get there the fastest he possibly can. Even though the meter's running, it doesn't matter. It's about 4 o'clock in the afternoon or so, and it's heavy traffic. Yeah, bastard Very, very heavy traffic. There's no point changing lanes. You can very much... I, I get it. Sometimes you can see there starts to be movement and why not? That one's going, you change. This guy was changing every six seconds. Wow, that's sure. He yeah. was off his head. And I was sort of just, uh, you know, just letting it go. And also because I was on a phone call, it's difficult to broach the two issues, you know. You don't want to be, oh, hang on a minute. Uh, anyway, it got to the point where we stopped and then we were crawling along. Then the taxi driver decided he'd had enough. He put the car in reverse Wow. What? We on the motorway. On the motorway. On the motorway. This is on a motorway. He puts the car in reverse. And then I said, hey, hey. And the, at this point, of course, the traffic in front of him started moving. So, oh, yeah, no, he's off again. And I said, mate, can I just, I just want to, for me, the most important thing is that I get home alive. That's my number one. That's the only thing I really care about. Sure. And saving an extra minute doesn't really interest me. He's like, no, 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 I'm not, I'm not, I'm not driving dangerously. I said, you kind of are. Can you just pick a lane and just stay in it and we'll just we'll just get home really you we'll, did that a hundred percent because i'll sit there silently stressing out about it oh no, no no and i was on the phone to somebody as well right who, who thought it was pretty funny i've never been in reverse on a motorway in my life no that is an absolute first i don't even know what he was trying to do going in reverse is not going to get you in front of the cars in front of you which nah, is what he wanted no. to have you had any weird experiences like that with well that's drivers? why I sit in the front as I say Mogi when I'm with the driver is because in that scenario I would, I would have just put my hand quietly on his knee and yes. gone it's okay yeah, yeah, yeah. it's okay yeah, it's okay and it's only going to get better we're, we're going to be alright alright yeah. right, okay. give me a little cuddle I mean the, the only thing I've experienced you're a stressy driver eh Keezy yeah I've actually seen you driving the car and your knees are knocking together yeah yeah <laughs> Yeah, that, that's what I was about to say, actually, <laughs> fellas. So thanks for just jumping no in worries. there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I am a stressy driver. Um, uh, to be honest, I have had a few experiences where the taxi drivers are crazy keen to get me there as fast as possible, and mm. it feels a bit dangerous. Never to the extent of having to actually say something. Yeah, reverse. I, I, I've I've been in a scenario where the taxi driver goes what and stops. The, ca- the car oh, oh, yeah. stops. What? And stops. Yeah. And like that, I found that disconcerting. Yeah, but then bra- I, right in the break. I yeah. just put my hand on his knee and said, it's, <coughs> it's going to be all right, right, big fella. Can- you see this? Which is funny because when I'm driving, I don't get stressed. Can I, I say? I just chill. Can I say also, Keezy, have you trimmed your moustache, man? No, not recently. Oh, okay. Why is that? It's looking good. Oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because the hairs aren't dipping into your mouth. You know what I mean? How oh. it does that? I'm not saying that's specifically your problem. Yeah, yeah. All of us guys with sick mo's have that issue, brother. Yeah, yeah don't we? Hey, fellas. Yeah, Jace. Hey, boys. Yeah, man, here's the cult. Us hairy bastards. The Hodaki Big Show, weekdays at four on Radio Hodaki. Oh, yes, indeed, the cult there on the Radio Hodaki Big Show. uh, Wednesday evening now coming up after six, of course, what's on the TV with Mike Minogue. (laughs) So good. And I hope this time you've bloody watched something, Mogi. Oh, yeah. God's sake, lift your game. And also, before that, uh, everyone's favourite segment, What's for Team New Zealand with me, Keys.
easy. <laughs> so uh, text in right now on 3483 what you're having for dinner tonight and who you are, where you are, and uh, you'll go in the draw to win one of a stack of $50 night and day vouchers. Nice. I've got I'll here. just give you a little heads up on what's for tea in my house. I'm not excited about it. Oh, yeah. It's, it's Pork kind mints. of. Nah. Saucies. Yeah. And I'm like, oh. oh. Are you going to the beach? I don't know you're going to the beach. No, no. It's just. just Taking a hot. Which, it's and, and and what's really upsetting me the most about it is we don't have fresh white bread either. We just right. got you could probably pick some up on the way home if you tried yeah, hard I, enough. I, I yeah, you drive home could, half an hour past like ten dairies. Yeah, pick up a I, couple of bags of cheese, bolos. I've got to pick up my daughter as well. Oh, I'm tired, fellas. Oh, well, all of that after six. <laughs> the Hodaki Big Show podcast. Catch them weekdays from four on Radio Hodaki. Welcome back, you massive backbones. You listen to the Big Show, brought to you by Night and uh, Day. And hey, oh. uh, hey, Keezy. Hello. Tell them all about the podcast outro and zhuzh it up a bit, would you? Uh, the podcast outro, it's basically behind the Put scenes. Put some of those horns on it. Oh, okay. And uh, like a little moustache uh, and a goatee. How am I supposed to put a moustache on a podcast? All right. Have you heard about the podcast outro? It is bonus material yeah. we do every single day, fellas. We come and we do the fantastic radio show and then a little extra for everyone is available. Push wherever that you get, button. Wherever you get... I don't see how it's relevant, but... <laughs> Just uh, on those hang buttons. On. Do I have a Hoity J one? No. Yeah, does he? Oh, what? Hoity J. Hoity J. Hoity J. Yeah, that's better. Thank okay, you. Okay, sorry. Yeah. Anyway, uh, the podcast outro, it's exclusive content we do extra every single day. So if you listen to the show and you enjoy it on the radio, at 7.30, we upload the podcast outro so you can get a little extra fix. I never knew that. Search Hodaki Big Show wherever you get your potties from. Here is a clip from today's one, which was all about uh, Prebs stitching us up last night. <laughs> we were like, oh, we're going to go watch uh, June 2 at the theatre. It's oh, which one? Newmarket. Oh, yeah, what time? 8 o'clock. Oh, yeah. Anyway, have fun, fellas. And then he left. Get to the movie theatre. He's sitting in the seat behind us. <laughs> <laughs> and I walked in and I like, there was a few people around. I was like, you son of a b- Prebs. And everyone like looked at us and he's just like, what do you mean? You never asked. <laughs> <laughs> Good old prebs, eh? Good old prebs. Sly dog and neat. He is a sneaky Such a son of bastard. a bee. Massive man For bastard. For those that don't know, actually, he does the Total 4 show here on Radio Hodaki. And the late show. And the late With show. Keezy. What? And the early morning show. Yep. Yeah. Midnight till dawn. The dawns with Prebs. So, yeah, he pulled a fast one on us. It was quite funny. Very yeah. good stuff. Hey, now coming up next is um, What's for Tea New Zealand with me. Easy, boom, boom, boom. Uh, text us 3483, What's for Dinner? That's good on right. You, mate. If you send through what you're having for tea on 3483, you could win yourself a $50 night and day voucher. So, get stuck in. Here's a bit of Harvey Danger. Okay. The Hodaki Big Show Podcast. Ozzy Osbourne there on the radio. Hodaki uh, Big Show. That's. <laughs> Get your napkins out, get the knives and forks out, set the table, because right now it's time for... Oh, yeah, hey, guys, text here from Steve. <laughs> What's for Team New Zealand? Zealand? With me, Keezy. As I already stated, I'm having sausages. I'm, I'm not very excited about my sausages. But having said that, also corn on the cob. Do you know last So night, I like corn on the cob. I like corn on the cob, too. Always yeah. have. That's I, just me. Fellas, I like it as well. There's three of us. Wow. The three amigos, eh? Yeah. Went home for a yummy dinner last night. There was nothing there. Jack. They'd eaten. They cooked me nothing. Can you believe that, Because you were hungry and looking forward to I it. I was starving, man. What did you do? Starving, Marvin. Um, I went to the shop and got a pie. That's not a joke. Yum. Yeah, good. I love a pie. Uh, so you're just having sausies. Jace, you having it like with taties or anything? Yeah, I'm, I'm sure my wife will probably roast up some taties and boil some uh, corn on the cobs. You've got a lovely um, a couple of ingredients there. What I do is I drill out the corn and I stick the sausage in it. And then I bake that in the oven. Now, that is good eating. But have you still got like husk in the middle sort no, of No, you cut it, cut it all out. But how does the corn stick to the... Just enough so there's a thin enough veil there to hold Right, on to like, a, like a hair net. Thank you. Yes. Yes, Jace. And then you eat the whole thing. The whole thing, man. What are you having, Casey? Because you're you're at home tonight, pork mince? Do you know what's actually funny? Yes. I'm having pork mince tacos (laughs) tonight of the Japanese variety. You love your pork mince. I didn't even know pork mince existed until I met you. Yeah. Yeah. And and, and now my wife, as I've said, is super self-conscious about it. Right. Why? uh, Because I keep getting hit up on the big show if I'm having pork mince. Does she listen to it? No, but I tell her. Oh, sure. And then when we're going on our walk back to the car park and she's with us, Jace will be like, pork mince tonight, guys. 
<laughs> and so she's really self-conscious of it. And so she's trying to time it now for days that Jace isn't walking with us. But tonight we are having it. Oh, good. What are the people having on 3483 there, Keezy? So much stuff, guys. Uh, g'day, mate. Tonight for tea we're having a big old bowl of skeddy meatballs. That's from Rachel in Christchurch. She even did a little spaghetti emo- emoji. Oh, oh emoji. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what about this? All right, for dinner, lads, bit of a meal tonight. Uh, entree, we'll start with some nice icy cold beers. For a main, we'll be having some beautiful chicken burgers prepared by the other half. And for dessert, some more nice cold brews to top it off. Sweet. Nice. Pretty good, eh? Uh, hey, fellas, deviled sausies for me in the miso tonight. Oh, you see, I could... I, no, no, I could... I love no. a deviled sausage as long as I've got a good mash with it. I can't be doing with the old... Apples? Um, well, there's that side of it. But there's also... I like, I like a crispy outside to a um, sausage. I don't like a... A soft sausage. Oh, you know I love saying? a soft sausage with a I, bit of mash. Nah, I like a hard, hard sausage. You know, around there, yeah, good yeah. crusty, yeah, good yeah. crusty sauce. Rigid. Uh, yeah, I want to burn the crap out of them. You're right. Uh, g'day, guys. Jeremy here from Invers. A few sips of water and a good workout because dinner is for weaklings. Yeah, that's so true. You hear what well, you're saying, brother. Really. I mean, it sounds stupid to me. Uh, good evening, guys. For tea. Hi. Good evening, guys. For tea, we're having kakapo skewers. Oh, the side ske- of oven chips. And that's from Keith. It's pronounced skier. 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 G'day, lads. On a trip, just fending for myself tonight as my wife isn't here. Uh, Going to Uber eat some, some delicious dirty bird. <laughs> yeah. Good stuff. Good stuff, fellas. <laughs> good that stuff, is good stuff. Fellas. Your missus goes away, so yeah, yeah. Yeah, Uber it as well. You're too lazy to even go and get it. And even though it's drive <laughs> It is good. And just so you know, I mentioned earlier in the show, actually, we've got a new car park here, which is great because it's close to where we are, Mogi. Yeah. The only thing is I'm missing out on my little chicken nibblies. Oh, yeah. Because I don't go past nibblet. that anymore. No. It's a bit of a bugger. We Although do. you've been hanging out at the old, um, the old snack machine, the vending machine here every day. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, you're best friends at that place. Uh, there is a bar that we yeah, walk past. Yeah, because the vending machine's a place. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it, you got me! The Hodaki Big Show, weekdays at four on Radio Hodaki. Yes, indeed, the Black Keys there on the radio. Hodaki Big Show this Wednesday evening. Let's get into a bit of TV chat, why don't we? What's on the telly with Mike Minogue? Yeah. yeah. It was it was a just a, a little bit of connectivity for yeah. a second. So really good, guys. A bit, well synch- a bit of synchronicity, Mogi. It was the old Nick three amigos. Easy, working in sync. Easy putting his big don't, rod don't. in. Don't. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's all good. Um, <laughs> last night, I watched some of a movie. Excellent. Hey, oh, changing what? it up just for you guys. You didn't watch Seinfeld. Roadhouse, the new movie with Jake Gyllenhaal. Roadhouse, the, re- the remake of the Patrick Swayze. Um, effort in the 80s. Yes. Great, great film. <laughs> you know, garbage, but great. Him and Sam Elliott, Kelly Lynch. It's about a, uh, a roadhouse which has got some rough types trying to kick the owner out, and so she gets in. In this case, Jake Gyllenhaal, former UFC fighter, to kick some ass and crack some skulls. Nice. Got about 20 minutes in. Mo Ath said, oh, can we please just watch this on the weekend and so we can watch it all at once? Because we wouldn't have last night, and we didn't. I said, can I just watch one fight? Can we just give me up to one fight? Which we did, and it was awesome. Great. So it's going to be out on Amazon Prime, I think, on the 21st of March. Oh, so you weren't watching it on Amazon now? I've got a screener. I've oh, got a right. screener. So I'll get you, I'll get you, you know, we'll watch it 20-minute increments. Uh, that's six days of uh, chat about Roadhouse coming your way. Roadhouse. I had a really interesting scenario last night, and I don't know why it was, but I was in a really annoying mood. Yeah, that checks um, out. So uh, 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 my wife was watching some stuff, and I, pretty, I pretty much spent the entire evening deliberately annoying my wife. And she'd be watching something, and I'd go, you are right? You are good? You're Fuck, good, darling? Annoying. And that's she's so like, annoying. yes, I'm all good. You sure? Because <laughs> you seem a bit tetchy. Um, and, and for some reason, I just got on that kick uh, for quite some time. But we got back to a series we've been watching by Guy Ritchie called The Gentleman. Oh, yeah. Basically, a son returns home, takes over the father's estate after the father dies. Um, uh, all sorts of shenanigans and shoe with sort of crazy characters all over the place. It's mildly entertaining. Uh, and I would also... But I'm in 
in that scenario with it whereby I'm not buying all the characters, right. but I'm still enjoying it enough yes. to watch it. Yes. Does that make sense to you, fellas? It does. Yeah, good. And, of course, last night, Keezy, you were juning it. Uh, Pugs and I went to see the new June movie at the Flicks. We were given some l- tickets to go, which meant, unfortunately, we couldn't go IMAX. Uh, so I would highly recommend going to see it IMAX if you can. I'm only going IMAX, brother. Even if you uh, can't go IMAX because it's only in Auckland at Queen Street, uh, it is the the most thrilling spectacle of a movie I've ever seen live at the Flicks before. Live do, at the Flicks? Do they have it in beta? Beta? Yeah, beta. I, I don't know. Oh, because I'd rather watch it in beta. Oh, you no. need the master copy, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah I see yeah, what we're doing okay, here. Yeah, no, but yeah. seriously, it was excellent. The action is second to none. The CGI is second to none. The scale, the sound, it's all magnificent. I preferred the story of the first flick. Mm. Preferred the action of the second one. How's the music? Oh, music's excellent. Yeah. It's fantastic. Um, Hans Zimmer. Yes, Hans I, I smacked it out of the park again. My wife and I watched that on Sunday. It, it is an excellent viewing experience. I did get quite frustrated by the sort of religious undertones that are in there. It's based on a book. It's based on a book, and yeah. that, there's a reason that it's meant to frustrate you. It's part of the whole experience. Yeah, 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 so, yeah, yeah. But I'd highly recommend go see it at the movies and then watch the first one as well. It's yeah, so good. Great yeah. stuff, Keezy. Good oh. Keezy, man. Chemical Brothers featuring Beck. Tune. Is this wide open? This is a beautiful, this beautiful is a great tune. tune. This one. Hodaki Big Show Podcast. Collective soul there on the radio, Hodaki Big Show. Now, uh, interestingly enough, uh, the Big Show is going to be down in Todonga on Friday, fellas, with the Dulux Tradies 11. And Keezy's taken over from old Hoity J in the ACC lineup. I understand you had a bit of a, a net today, Keezy. Uh, my first ever net session, got down there, put all the stuff on, realised we didn't have any gloves. Yes. So while it was quite awkward wearing the pads and holding a cricket bat, I'd never even done that with a helmet on. I feel like it's going to be completely different on Friday once I've got the gloves on as well. Like, Because holding a bat with gloves is it's quite It's like a- going into um, battle, isn't it, Chase? You've got your... Sure, uh, you've you're got padding your, up. Your, you've got your armour on um, and off you go. But yeah, it's, it's cumbersome. It, yeah, it's a, and the bat's so much heavier because I played softball yeah. for some reason, and the bat is just so much heavier. T ball, you, you, you're massively into T ball. Yeah, T ball, that's what it was. Can I give you some advice on that front, actually, mm. uh, Keezy, with regards to the gear? Wear as little as possible. Uh, so you don't need your gloves or your box and stuff because I find the lighter you are on the feet, the better you play. Right. If you're loaded down with all sorts of unnecessary gear, it's going to constrict the way you swing well, the bat. My, any advice I've got for you is take as much advice as you can off Hoity J. Right. Totally, okay. man. It's just that everyone I ever see plays cricket wears all the gear. Why <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That, well, that's the never, mistake they make. Never right. Never the crowd, yeah. man. What, if, what one, You've got to be an innovator, brother. Because I did put the box in. Yeah, no, don't do that. That was weird, having that right up against yeah. your skin. Yeah, exactly. It's off-putting, I found. Yeah. I don't and know. it never sat, uh, sat comfortably with me. Yeah. And you know, so it never fitted or, um, you know, it'd be just a pain in the ass. Yeah, okay. We, I see what we're doing. <laughs> so I, I didn't realise with the box, because the pants man was talking me through it. So you have to take your pants and your undies off, put it on, and then just put your undies back on and then pad up. So, cause, well, I mean, you don't have to take all your pants and undies off. You can just slip it in there, Keezy. Oh, oh no. Well, really? But then how does it stay there? Well, have you ever, you know, lift, stretched your undies out and just put something down there? I mean, I never had because I, I don't need. Because I already of, stretched out yeah, quite yeah, a bit with your massive, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Sorry, what? What were you? What was your way of doing it? So, dropping your, everything just the right pants down man the told me. So you drop everything, you put the box on, then you just have your undies on because you don't really need pants because you've got the thigh pad and the knee pads and blah blah. And I had quite a baggy t-shirt. Um, right, and then I had the helmet on, which was a bit too small for me as well. I was running a bit of a, um, uh, what was the guy who hit four hundred? Came over here and then couldn't. Brian Lara. Brian Lara. <laughs> yeah, I was running a Lara for a bit there and couldn't see anything. And then the pants man, who was about six foot seven, was throwing down massive. He's, massive steamers. He's actually pretty nippy, uh, Mogi. Yeah. I've faced Hugely. him before. And another thing, I didn't realise when it's wet, it skids on. Oh, it does, yeah. So yeah, very much. Well, she snows up against the, the uh, grill no, of the helmet? No, that was fine, actually, Jase. Oh, okay. Because yours sticks out through it, eh? They had to cut a hole in yours. Um, <laughs> but listen, uh, we are going to be down there in uh, Tauranga, at Mount Monganui, actually, on Friday. We'll give you some updates of how Keezy went and so forth. Yes, we're going to be playing at Bay Oval during the afternoon and doing the show as well. Uh, and then in the evening, I'm going to be heading down, me and Pugs, actually, yeah. are going to head down Pugs to a local are. bar 
and give away some uh, bar tabs to so keep an eye on the Hodaki Big Show socials too. If uh, anyone's got a car they want to leave me so I can drive it there and back, that would be awesome because I don't want to go take my tea to truck because I think it's going to be sh- it's going to be raining. Right. Don't want it to get wet. Oh, because I don't like driving my truck in the wet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, nice. The Hodaki Big Show, weekdays at four on Radio Hodaki. Well, we did it, New Zealand. We got through hump day. It's over. It's done. It's dusted. We don't have to do it again. We've finished. Mogi, what are your plans for the night, mate? Uh, another 20 minutes of your movie, maybe? Yeah, maybe another 20 minutes of my movie and uh, a little bit of tidy up. Go home, put the kids to bed. Da, 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 da. Seinfeld, Seinfeld, Seinfeld. And 20 minutes of your movie. And 20 minutes of my movie. Yeah, nice. Seinfeld. Kizzy, what are you up to? Uh, I was supposed to be going to a BYO tonight, which I was excited for, but also I was like, oh, I can't be bothered. Uh, but that's been cancelled. Oh, yeah, good. Don't yeah, you love it when stuff. that sort of stuff is cancelled? Usually no, but today I'm like, oh, yes, yeah, so I'm just going to go home, have dinner with my wife there. We'll probably watch the second half of Goodwill Hunting. Uh, finish oh, yeah. that off. Yeah. And then uh, she'll go to bed. Oh, I'll put her to bed. I'll have a small glass of port and play PlayStation. Yeah, good stuff. Uh, what are you doing, Jace? Weirdly yeah, Jace. enough, weirdly enough, I feel like going for a run tonight, so I'll probably do that. Um, then have some dinner, watch a bit of TV, probably annoy my wife again. I feel like I'm in that mood yeah. again of just sort of annoying the crap out of her. Mm. Uh, read a book and then fall asleep. Nice. That's Thanks, good. Mate. Good Thanks. on you, man. Yeah. Hey, make sure you tune in same time, same place tomorrow. Until then, you take care out there, and we'll see you later.